Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today I want to show you my new project, which is a, finally a complete off-meta project. Yeah, it is a triple curse, uh, no wait a second, triple purity, a double curse, low life, essence drain, blight, contagion, uh, occultist. Yeah, something like that. Currently level 73, uh, leveled up uh, today. So yeah, I want to show you the early stages of this build, how everything works, and then uh, talk about how we can improve the build. And then, uh, yeah, in a couple of days, bring you the update on the more expensive and hopefully, yeah, cool build that I'm trying to do here. So as I said, I'm an occultist, or at least this character is an occultist. And yeah, we are using Contagion, Essence Drain and Blight to, uh, yeah, kill our enemies with a pure chaos damage. So this is a chaos damage build. Um, the good thing about it, everything that's chaos related, unless it's like uh, some crawler stuff, um, is completely off matter because nobody is playing chaos, like these kind of chaos characters. So um, fossil crafting in that case is actually pretty cool because um, the aberrant fossils or something, um, they go for like one chaos for three or four of those. So pretty cheap to delve craft. And yeah, pretty cool. So uh, before we talk any more, uh, I'm not going to do any too high map to be honest. Um, yeah, graveyard should be fine. Uh, because as I said, level 73, uh, wow, what is that? Holy shit. Yeah, whatever, let's try. No risk, no fun, right? So, um, yeah, before uh, we talk anything more, or at least, uh, how should I say, I want to explain the build, how it works. So everybody who is not used to um, Essence Drain can see what it actually does. So basically, we have Contagion. Contagion makes a big circle and debuffs the enemy. So this leaves behind a cold, at least um, a Chaos damage over time effect. Um, and once the mob is dying, it will spread this circle. You can see that uh, once I'm killing a group, um, that you will see once the first enemy dies, um, there, he will spawn a lot of small blue circles, right? So, the next thing is, you have Contagion and then you have Essence Drain. Essence Drain is our damage ability that does a lot of chaos damage, currently like 90k or something per second. And when a mob dies with Contagion and Essence Drain, the Essence Drain will get spread with the Contagion. And Blight is more or less just single target, uh, more DPS. Because uh, we as this is a skill effect that has a duration, so there is no reason to permanently spam Essence Drain on a target because the initial hit does like nothing. As you see here, DPS like 11k, that's the, the thing, the damage when the ball hits. But the big damage comes from the damage over time effect. So before standing here for five seconds doing nothing, I have Blight in here for more damage. Blight is actually chaos damage as well, so all our uh, abilities are pure chaos damage. And it leaves behind a debuff. This debuff stacks up to 20 times. So at this case, we have like 10k damage, right? And if we just stay and channel this one, it gets more and more layers until we hit like 20 and then it does like 200k per second or something. And, and this current state with that gear and that level. So will be a lot higher uh, at later stages. So let's see how this works in, the, in, in practice, mana. right? As you saw, um, the um, contagion at this stage does not really a lot of damage. But as you see, once they're dying, they, they have those small blue circles. And this is the spread of it. It can actually get bigger with increased area of effect and stuff like that. And as you see here, those blue circles are spread. So what happens is I'm debuffing them and get the essence drain. The essence drain does a lot of damage and gets spread with the contagion. So if we just gonna lure a lot of mobs together, one essence drain, and you see like everything dies what is in the range of uh, the explosion here. So this is the, the theory part, right? So let's play a little bit so you can see how this works uh, out. Then we have Val Blight. That's actually pretty cool. Like uh, once you have gathered enough souls, you do this kind of chaos nowhere that has a shitload of damage and it's quite funny. So let's see, uh, boss DPS. I mean, it's it's in the early stages. You're gonna, it's just in the early stages. So there is not like too much damage and I will show you at least like the small problem we have here at the moment, but I think I can fix that later on. So the character will turn out pretty decent. So let's go in the laboratory. 
it's just like those two skill points. At least those two skills. You're gonna make your, your contagion and then you hit your essence drain and actually everything dies once you hit your essence drain because I usually don't hit that that often. That's actually because I'm very bad at hitting stuff. But once you hit your essence drain, <laughs> not like I do, <laughs> Uh, you're gonna clear the whole screen with it without any problem and when there's m any bigger mob like here go in the middle Get your uh, Val blight off and do like a shitload of area of effect So good uh, Whatever Whatever So I think we're just gonna clear off the map a little bit so you guys see more of the gameplay, but it's it's a very unique play style and it's very fun to play. I like it a lot. I um, it's I think the fifth or sixth time actually I play Essence Drain. Essence Drain is super league starter friendly because it's not a lot of um, stuff you need because there is not a f uh, not too many uh, things that actually can scale your uh, your chaos damage. So you can get away with a, a lot of um, rare items and that's about it basically. But yeah, I think... Oh, wait a second. I want to show you something else that is actually pretty cool. Um, let's go back to town real quick. So, um, I have here an Essence Drain setup with 6-Link and the Conta uh, and uh, Blight setup with 6-Link, right? Uh, if we actually take the Contagion and remove it with Blight, so we have actually a 6-Link Contagion, uh, the Contagion will do a lot of damage, and especially in mapping, or at least in the early stages, that's fair enough to kill off the, the screen, right? So all you do is just run and get your Contagion off, and that's about uh, that's about it. But this will actually make it uh, quite easy to level up, since we have actually a pretty... yeah, 6 link, pretty nice. So that's all you do, you basically just run around and, and hit your uh, Contagion. So Essence Drain in combination is something you probably use later on at later stages of the game. But on low tier mapping and that kind of stuff, it's fair enough if you just hit your Contagion and clear off the whole screen with it. And if somebody still stands still, you still have a 6 linked Essence Drain. Okay, I think this should be fine for our map showcase, or at least how the build is working with the Essence Drain and that kind of stuff. But usually on later stages, you really want to have your Blight as a single target spell, Contagion as a... Yeah, just to spread the dot and Essence Drain is your map clearer, basically. So, how does this work together and how everything, yeah, works together? I mean, obvious. First of all, if you're like, hey, wait a second, you're level 70, 74 now and you have double six link. This is not, not something that usual players have. Yeah, that's correct. But therefore, I run double Empower level 4. Um... To explain that, Empower makes your the base level of the skill higher, and this is very, very important on Chaos Gems. So if you don't have the currency, hey, skip this one, skip that one, and now it's a double five link. Somebody has uh, something everybody can afford, and not too hard uh, to get, basically. Especially since the Cane of the Unraveling is a little bit reworked Chaos Staff that gives you Chaos damage, in, uh, level of Socrates Chaos Gems, goes for, I think, a Chaos... Oh wait, this is 6 link. So, 6 link for 2 exalts, 3 exalts. It's not expensive. Like, a 6 link for 3 exalts, it's super cheap. But if it's not 6 linked, it's actually... Wait, can we check it like that? If we uncheck the 6 link, it goes for 1 chance. Not expensive. Same as the uh, Chevron's wrappings. That goes... It's not too expensive to... But it's a low life build, so you want to have the um, Chevron's wrappings in terms that your that chaos damage doesn't bypass your energy shield. Otherwise, you would die instantly. So this one goes for 20 chaos, not too expensive. But before we talk about that kind of stuff, uh, I want to go from the, the top to the bottom so you see what kind of gear I invested and what my plans are. So we have the Evers Anification. Pretty cheap helm goes for, I think, a, a chaos... Um, it gives you a lot of energy shield and, yeah, Void Gaze when you use a skill. That's the, the weird scream she does sometimes. You saw it right there. Wait a second. Yeah, this one. Void Gaze actually lowers the resistance, the chaos resistance um, of the enemy, which is great. But I would definitely suggest um, self-crafting uh, with Delph Fossils, the Aberrant Fossils, to get minus chaos resistance to nearby enemies. Because this way you can get more energy shield, resistance as some kind of that stat. 
If you're cheap on budget, take this one like I did for now. It's one chaos maybe with a good energy shield roll, like I paid one chaos for this one. Pretty easy to get. Links, we have Despair and Feeble, Blasphemy and Blood Magic. Here I need to make sure Blood Magic. Um, I don't know if it works with a level 20. It should technically, I don't know. I have like 61 life left. So um, to explain that, we have Pain Attunement. That means when we're on low life, we have 30% more spell damage. And this is why we actually want to get our life below 30%. If you don't have access to Blood Magic uh, level 21, there is one simple trick you can do. You take a Blood Magic level 1, don't level it up, because the lower the level of the Blood Magic is, uh, the more mana multiplier you have. In the end, you will have a Blood Magic with a level 1, right? And Despair, for example, this is the uh, the aura that gives minus chaos resistance to enemies. Um, it will exactly soak up 70% of your life. So if you can't afford a blood magic level 21, 20, get a level 1 and skip and feeble. This, is, this will be enough to get you on low life. And if you can afford the blood magic, I think it goes like 1.5 exalts or something, uh, then you can run the double curse. Okay, um, Blasphemy to have it as an aura, and yeah, as explained. So, uh, as I said, um, I am I have here some gear on the side that I want to test, play with it. This would be some kind of uh, helmet that I want to use in later stages. So, Essence Drain Damage is not very often on this um, helmet. I didn't, like, I just checked before when I bought this one, is there an Essence Drain Damage? No, there is not. Maybe there is one offline. It's just... This is a helm base what lap runners usually not enchant. You know, they, they usually enchant Zirconias, they have Devotos, uh, some Hubris Circlets and something like that. So um, this is not a usual one, so that's why it's hard to get the enchant here. So what I did, I was just buying an, a Hubris Circlet with a base with just Essence Drain and that's about it. Then I bought these fossils, the Aberrant Fossils, and spammed some away to get this nearby enemies have 9% Chaos Resistance. Com uh, combined with some energy shield will take a couple of rolls, but it's not really hard to get and the energy shield rolled uh, rolls are pretty bad as well But this is de definitely something I would recommend uh, to fix your resistance and, and that kind of stuff Okay, let's move on with uh, the cane of the unraveling pretty usual stuff uh, gives a lot uh, gives a lot of chaos damage It is always the same links basically you have your skill you have your double like efficiency and control destruction then you have Void Manipulation and um, Swift Affliction. Those are both um, damage over time and chaos damage. And the Empower to give max level. It's the same setup here. You have your skill, which is Essence Drain. Then you have Efficiency and Control Destruction, followed by Swift Affliction and Void Manipulation and Empower Gem. So this is basically the exact same setup here. Because you only have those four uh, skill gems or support gems that will... Um, empower your uh, essence drain or at least your chaos ability so what is very important on chaos spells you need a high base level and in 3.5 since we have the crafting bench now we have the socketed support gems plus two level of socketed support gems it's an ex uh, one exalt enchant but it will give an empower gem plus two levels so this makes it level six and you get five levels for your active skill gems so um, this is the, 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 the budget recommendation that I give you um, running with the Cane of the Unraveling because it's plus two level of socketed Chaos Gems. So my uh, Essence Drain is currently level plus five, makes it 22. So um, in theory, I have this here. Uh, it's just a, um, a staff here, six linked with the colors that I need. And I have a, a, a kind of project with it. There is a way to get plus three Chaos Gems on an easy way. I just want to give you a um, small example for this. So what you're going to do, um, you're going to craft mana on it, right? Let's see, plus three uh, Chaos Gems. Let's say tutorial. So what you want to do is you're going to craft mana. And then you're going to regal for plus two Chaos Gems. Okay, this will take several tries. You're just gonna take this one, craft mana, regal, score, craft mana, regal, score, craft mana, regal, score, and so on. Uh, until you hit the plus two G chaos gems. It usually takes about, I don't know, like 30 to 60 tries, something like that. Okay, it is like 60 chaos or something, 70 chaos maybe. And just make sure if you if you craft the mana roll, um, make sure you hit the lowest here because this is just three augmentations before you hit the two chaos roll every time. 
because we just want to block something. Okay, so once you did that, and you have the plus two chaos gems, you're gonna craft something. So then you remove the craft, right? Remove craft. So you actually have a rare item because of the regal that has plus two chaos gems and nothing else. So what you do then is you're gonna multi-mod for two X. Then you're gonna run um, cannot roll attack mods. I think this is one X and cannot roll caster mods. This is, I think, six blessings. I'm not really too sure which one it was what. So, cannot roll. Um, attack is one axe and caster is five blessings. Okay. So, then you have a staff with plus two chaos gems, multi mod, this, this. So, in theory, at least, yeah, in theory, um, there is only two more stuff that can roll since we are blocking attack and caster mods. And this is mana and plus one of socketed gems. These are the two things that you can actually get when you slam it then, it's like use an exalt on it, right? So what you're gonna do, since we have multi-mod, you're gonna craft mana. So we delete this one actually, and then you're gonna exalt orb your staff and it has plus one socketed gems, 100%. So this leaves you behind, then you remove the crafts, and then you have a plus one socketed gems, socketed gems, a plus two chaos socketed gems. And then you remove the crafts. Yes, it's, it is a little bit expensive, I know that, but if you have the currency on your side, uh, this will freaking boost your essence drain to level 30. And this is something I really wanna get because base level is king on chaos. So in the end, we will have this one. Let's move that one over here. In the end, you will, you will have this one. Then you get multi mod on it. And then I want to have these socketed gems. Uh, no, wait a second. Level of socketed support gems is 1x craft. And this is also a prefix. So plus two level of socketed support gems, which is a total of five plus levels, okay? And then you can take whatever uh, suffixes you want, probably calf speed or something, I don't know. So what that means is your essence drain is level 21 in a perfect scenario, right? Level 21, 20 or something is level 21. Okay, with an empower level three, uh, level four, you have plus three uh, of your um, main sk skill, makes it 24, right? So. Then you have plus one level of socketed gems and plus two level of socketed support gems, which makes the empower to freaking level seven, which gives you plus six base levels. And this will make your uh, freaking um, empower gem to level 27 on this point. Le like your, your gem is 21 and then you have plus six for 27. Then you have still plus one socketed gems and plus two chaos gems, so, your essence drain will be not level 27, it will be level 30. And once you hit this power spike, basically, I mean, it is an investment, but it's something I wanna do. Just make sure, make sure guys, you don't be so stupid as I am and take a shaped base, take a regular base. Because what happens is, wait a second, let me show you. I did that yesterday. Uh, let me scroll this one up a little bit. So this is what happens. You have your plus two level of socketed gems, you have cannon roll attack and caster mods, you have multi, you you uh, craft mana and then you slam it. And what happened, since I'm an idiot and took a shaper base because it looks cooler, I got a freaking shaper stat here instead of the plus one uh, level of socketed gems. Don't be that stupid as I am. Take a regular base, non-shaped, and you will hit the plus level 100%. Okay. Enough talking of this. This is the budget version, the cane of the unraveling. If you want to spend more into it, try this one. Perfect. Level 30 on a gem. It does like a shitload of damage. Holy fuck. Okay, let's keep on talking here on the Chevron's wrappings. We are low life. That means chaos damage, same as we do it, it ignores energy shield. So if you have a million energy shield and five life, I'm just going to instantly kill you with this because it ignores the energy shield. So that's why we need the Chevron's wrappings. So uh, it has the mod Chaos Damage does not bypass Energy Shield. So now I can actually run with like 60 life, but I have like 6,000 Energy Shield. So Chaos Damage will not go through the Energy Shield. This is very important. 
gems we already set, same as here, just with another uh, skill gem. Then I have here uh, just resistance and energy shield. Nothing else. Resistance, energy shield. Here I have fastest start of energy shield recharge. That's a two regal craft. There is one better um, that has 23, 24%, but it costs an exalt. So this is the cheaper version, but still good. On the other hand, I have a void eye plus five level of socketed gems. I run discipline in this one, so I get my discipline to freaking level 26, which is quite insane because you get a lot of energy shield. What I usually would run is this one. This one is a new uh, unique, the Vivin sect, um, that gives you as well as, as the Void Eye plus level of uh, socketed gems, like aura gems. Um, since discipline is an aura, that works pretty fine. But we have 15 life regeneration, you have uh, all attributes, which, which is pretty important because I have like strength uh, wait, intelligence over here, then we have strength over here, then I I skilled into strength and dexterity because you starve those stats pretty insanely, so this is pretty good to have uh, those roll. And try to get the, the craft or at least the veiled mod strength and dexterity. So that will help us freeing up some uh, nodes to get more energy shield. So it also says you have 10% increased mana. So that means if I use this one now with discipline, you will see that we actually don't have any mana left to basically uh, cast stuff now. If I can actually activate it, yeah. But it's like, what do we have? Like 90 mana? mana. Have fun with trying to get your spells out. Um, so how to counter that one would be an Alls Uprising. This will be in the more expensive version, right? Because Alls Uprising with the Discipline Reserves No Mana, you get this one over here. And look at that, we have enough mana to do to reserve even more stuff, like, for example, what I plan to do in the later stages with an aspect of the spider. But for the cheaper version that I'm leveling up right now, and I want to share this one, so if you don't have that uh, amount of budget that I have uh, on this specific character, I want to show you how you still can play this character without any problems, right? That's why we use the Void Eye in this specific uh, scenario. Okay, let's move to the gloves. They're just resistance and uh, energy shield with the Contagion, uh, increased area of effect, Arcane Surge support, and faster casting. Um, arcane Surge support is basically, keep it on a level, like when I scroll over here, you have you see mana cost 48. My Arcane Surge is level eight, is mana cost 41. The next stage would be 51. So you wanna make sure every time you cast it, you get your Arcane uh, Surge buff. Uh, on the belt, this is Bated Breath. It's a pretty cheap one. I think it's like one chance, one chul, one chromatic. Gives you energy shield, uh, energy shield recharge rate and increased damage and that kind of stuff. It's pretty sick for that amount of cost. Uh, also pretty cheap is Sintrek Boots. Don't worry about the enchant, this is the wrong one. Sintrek go for one, two, three chaos, gives you a shitload of energy shield. Like, I, I don't know, like um, 140 uh, flat energy shield, which is kind of insane because on this flat energy shield you get all the multipliers right so here we have our triple purity setup with an enlightened support um yeah pretty easy to say if we skip the enlightened support um wait a second and get the uh, things rolling i don't even know okay yeah so we have absolutely zero mana reserve that's good so that's why i need enlightened to free up mana so you want to check if that you get a level four enlighten. I don't think it will work on a level three. Still, um, there, this is something I did um, when I have triple purity on my resistance are capped now, right? So what I did is take an amulet that has a lot of cold resistance. So you see, I have 130 uh, cold resistance. So sometimes when I play higher maps or something, I just deactivate the herald of purity just to free up mana to cast more frequently. And since I have an amulet with a lot of cold resistance, I'm still capped, right? So this is the, the idea, or at least almost capped. So if you cannot afford an enlighten, then get an amulet or somewhere where it's flat cold, uh, like a lot of cold resistance, so you, you could technically skip a purity, whatever it is, right? So uh, on the flasks, we have Witchfire Brew um, for more uh, chaos damage over time, or at least damage over time. Then we have a Basalt Flask of Heat for freeze and chill immunity. Then we have a Rumi's Concoction to add another layer of defense. A Sulfur Flask of Staunching um, for bleed immunity and Consecrated Path. Make sure to have these uh, Salad's Oath so you get the life regen. Convert it for energy, energy shield. 
and the Quicksilver Flask to move a little bit faster. For our items, or at least the skill tree, where things get pretty fancy, uh, basically I skipped the majority of energy shield nodes for now, because I think it was more important to get the build working. I know I have only 6k energy shield at the moment, it should be on later stages, like level 93, 94 or something, I should be able to crack 10k energy shield, which is pretty decent for a build like that. So what I did was I, I checked for all these mana reservation nodes. So Varinity, on the right side you have Influence, or at least the, the reduced mana reserve here. And on the bottom side you have Charisma. So all of these three will actually help me to uh, reserve less mana so I can run double curse and triple purity on that side. And a free um, discipline if you have the Owls Uprising or you do it the way I have it here, and you skip a purity if you can't afford an enlightened gem. So here we take spell damage, here we have a double uh, spreading rot, you can take two of, uh, two of those. Increase chaos damage, um, you hinder enemies, blight will do more damage. So we run two of those, I corrupted them with blood cannot be inflicted to, do, uh, to you, and also with silence. Pretty nice to have, if you don't have that, don't worry, take it without the corruptions, like one chaos maybe. So then we have uh, here one additional curse, so we can actually run dual curse. Uh, here is just damage over time, same on the other side. This is just dot damage, energy shield. Then we have more dot damage, these are the points that I will skill now. Here's some uh, more all resistance and energy shield and so on. There is one important thing that I adjusted it for now because I have a mana problem. And this is something I need to fix, I need to figure out how to fix that. Because if I just activate my pure D of ice now, and you see I have like 123 mana. That means I can do like one contagion, one essence drain, but if I m miss the essence drain, you see it, it takes a couple of seconds until I can shoot the next one. So what I did was, or at least like if I play like this and just kill it like that and then move on, you see I can't really shoot a second one uh, quite fast. So that's why I took the um, the Soul Siphon for now, because it says mana gained on kill. So every time you, you have your big spread, um, you kill the whole screen, you have full mana. No problem, easy going. But I, I need to check on later stages because this is something... I don't need maximum mana and I don't need the mana itself. It, I just killed this one for the, for the five mana gained on kill. I need to see if I can run actually um, maybe skip... Um, arcane search and faster casting get another blood magic with clarity something like that I need to check how I can uh, regen enough mana so I can actually permanently spam my skills without killing targets because this will be important uh, on any kind of bosses like uber elder and stuff right check so anything else to say here um, I need a watcher's eye jewel still need should be um, Faster start of energy shield recharge rate while affected by discipline. Uh, they go for about two exalts roughly, so it is affordable. Um, in terms of the ascendancy, um, because I, like I said, I played essence drain for quite some time now. I had it as a life based, I had it um, as energy shield based, I had it as an occultist, uh, low life cyan, I tried everything. The occultist, in the later, uh, before the rework, you had to do, uh, you ha you wanted to get the malediction, but this one you you had to take the profane bloom because it's one way, right? With the old skill tree, same as it, it is now. The problem is the profane bloom. It is the chaos explosions when you curse or kill a cursed enemy. This will interrupt your chains, and this is the reason why back in the days I I leveled up the occultist. I saw I didn't know that. I saw it on the first two maps that the, the, the chaos explosion will interrupt my chain, so I was like, log out, level a scion, make a trickster, occultist, ascendancy, and try it like that. So with the reworked skill, you take Val Bastion and uh, Wicked Ward for the flat energy shield, and now you can go Void Beacon and move to the left side for Withering Presence. Usually, if you remember, if you're used to play Essence Drain builds, you had a spell totem with Wither. So, since we have Withering Presence, it says every second inflict Withered on a nearby enemy for 15 seconds. So we, we, we save those skill points. If you like the Chaos Explosions, take Malediction and Profane Bloom. I just don't. It just sucks as Essence Drain. It's fine on every other build, just not Essence Drain. Okay, um, anything else I need to mention here? Hmm. Like I said, I was going for reduced mana reserved first, then the chaos damage, and now every more levels I will get, I will skill into um, unnatural calm, 
Then I want to go down here, uh, take all these energy shield nodes. I want to skill uh, arcane focus. I want to get over here, like take as many energy shield nodes as possible. And in the end, we should actually reach about 10,000 energy shield, which is quite fine to have. Okay, passives. We killed all bandit, uh, bandits this time. We are not a crit build, so um, we don't really care about the multiplier. So we take the, the two skill points. This is fine. Uh, for pantheons, I can't really tell you because I just leveled up, so I don't even know what I should take. Probably Solaris for a little bit more physical damage mitigation, and then maybe... I think Shakari for immune to poison against Tora. Or whatever you can take. I don't know. Make up yourself because this. I don't think that pantheons are that super important to deal with. Okay, for the MTX, if you want to know, um, I have the Celestial Hood with the Har uh, Harbinger Challenge Eyes. Uh, we have the Stalker Wings, the Master Undertaker Body Armor, the Undertaker Weapon Effect, Master Undertaker Gloves and Boots, the Celestial Corrector Effect with the Celestial Footprints, the Demon King Portal Effect, and the Arcane Package for. Um, yeah, Wither for uh, Essence Drain and also for um, the Contagion. So that's here, Contagion. Uh, then we have Arcane Essence Drain. Blasphemy, I could take something else. Haven't gotten something. Force Field, um, the Soul Nexus. And here I skip to, I don't know. I don't think that it's cool if I have some red here or this one here. I just like like it's sleek with the whole blue and, and purple because it's it looks pretty insane. Okay, anything else to say? We have the gems, we have the skill tree, path of building link from this current state of the art is in the description below. Uh, we talked about the skill tree, the gems, the jewel, the ascendancy, the passives, the pantheon. Uh, I think there is nothing else. So I'm going to level up this character now. I want to see how I can fix my problems or at least solve the mana problems and that kind of stuff. And yeah. Would be great if you're uh, if you're interested in then feel free to hit the subscribe button and yeah. Wait for the update, I guess. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I love this playstyle. I don't know. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see ya on the next video.